So welcome to this a bit special event, uh, an overview on our applications and algorithms track uh, as part of the invited program of this year's ISC and now the digital ISC. My name is Hans Bungartz, I'm from Technical University of Munich in Germany and I'm the chair of this applications and algorithms track. So looking at the role algorithms and apps play, uh, the, that's of course very important. It happens at the interface of models and data. If you see how simulation science influenced the business, that's of course by transforming models into data and who did this transformation, of course, applications and algorithms. And now we see the other way around, that data science and artificial intelligence turn data uh, available everywhere into models. And again, it's applications and algorithms that do the job and of course both of them applications and algorithms are significantly empowered by high performance computing. Nevertheless I think it's important that we uh, keep in mind that algorithms and applications are two different things. Sometimes in particular a couple of years ago people were frequently speaking of co-design of systems and applications and I believe that's not really true what we have to consider is a co-design of applications and algorithms. So can, how can algorithms be best tuned, best tailored to specific algorithm, to specific applications? What do applications have to do that they fit to the uh, algorithms? And of course, also the co-design of algorithms and the software stack uh, or the complete systems uh, then. So applications is of course originally what high performance computing has been created for why we do this as a justification of all the HPC efforts. HPC has been enabling the transformation over the last decades, what we have seen from traditional science and engineering moving towards computational science and engineering as we see today in most of our uh, academic fields. Um, if you look at what kind of applications do we find there, then there are of course first the usual suspects. So applications we all know from simulation science, that's energy, that's climate, that's neuro, that's life science. Uh, everlasting customers, okay, hopefully everlasting customers for HPC with ever growing demands. But we also see new customers, applications from, from data science and artificial intelligence that newly entered the stage, but that are also strongly depending these days on high performance computing. So that's applications. What about the algorithms? Algorithms are of course uh, a crucial part for uh, high performance computing. They are ex uh, actually essential for the high performance in high performance computing, of course, besides uh, the hardware. I've just picked up one example from a SIAM report, which has been published in SIAM Review two years ago. And where if you look at the left graphics, you see that uh, actually the improvement in algorithms here taken for the performance of linear solvers, the different uh, yeah, classes of different solvers that have been developed over the decades. So if you compare this black curve of increasing performance, that's quite similar in terms of factors to what we have seen to Moore's, uh, with the Moore's law, which means there's an, a similar improvement factor with algorithms compared to that uh, with the hardware. So if we don't work on algorithms, if we don't also improve algorithms, we basically lose uh, a good deal of the possible performance gain. So this shows a bit the tremendous role of algorithms in the whole um, HPC uh, business. And of course, ever growing with the performance is are also the demands and that's the right part of this picture where you see that more and more requirements uh, in terms of accuracy, in terms of breadth of the model, in terms of number of different effects taken into account, of course these demands also uh, increase in a similar way. So that has been, or these have been the thoughts behind uh, in conceptualizing uh, our applications and algorithms track where we have designed four different sessions and these sessions of course won't be lost. They will be back uh, in 2021 in next year's um, ISC then hopefully again a real uh, ISC. So four sessions uh, all uh, chaired by an esteemed colleague. So we have session one 
probably the classical path, HPC empowering artificial intelligence. What can HPC do to empower, uh, to force, to support artificial intelligence? Chair was here, uh, George Beerus from the UT in Austin in the USA. Then in session two, we deal with the second way round. The other way round, uh, how does artificial intelligence empower high performance computing? Here the chair uh, is Florina Czauba from the University of Basel in Switzerland. Picking up just one application, one class of applications, one field of application, we decided for energy with a particular focus on renewables, so HPC for the energy transition. And this session is chaired by uh, Herbert Owen from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center in Spain. And last but not least, we were also thinking of what, what is an important ingredient in HPC, and that's of course calculation, and that's of course numbers and number representation. And while this was a, or while this has been a closed chapter for almost some decades now, recently it has uh, got additional and renewed attention in terms of uh, mixed precision calculations, mixed arithmetics calculation, and this is a the theme of our fourth uh, session, uh, headed by uh, John Gustafsson from the National University of Singapore. So I just briefly go now through the, through the four sessions, just want to depict the main ideas, and this then will complete my short overview of what we have uh, designed in this track uh, applications and uh, algorithms. So, Let's start with HPC empowering AI. That's of course, that starts with uh, a GPU. All of us are aware of uh, accelerators based on GPU. It st they started uh, from gaming, then they were adopted in uh, HPC, and today they are kind of a workhorse for artificial uh, in intelligence. The same is true for a lot of algorithm collection, libraries, numerical libraries, for example, GEM, general matrix, matrix multiplication, which today is a workhorse for convolutional uh, neural networks. And we see this similar development for a couple of hardware developments and, of course, uh, a couple of algorithms. So HPC, HPC thoughts, HPC experience is empowering artificial intelligence. And if we move forward, uh, we even see more of that, special circuits for fast inference, Asynchronous algorithms will also uh, support artificial intelligence a lot. Uh, variable precision is here also a, a topic as in our session four. And then of course we have uh, more sophisticated algorithms, kernel optimization, then for more exotic um, neural networks uh, beyond the classical ones. So there's a, a, a whole slew of uh, threads where one can see that HPC is empowering AI. So this is probably dealing with, most of the time, dealing with speed, making it performant. Uh, the other way around, uh, what can AI do for HPC, is more in terms of make it smarter, make it more intelligent. So how can we improve scheduling, load balancing, resource management, energy optimization? Uh, how can we uh, foster uh, auto-tuning uh, and all these kind of uh, things? And actually there are a couple of examples where modeling and simulations of classical HPC applications have benefited from uh, AI. For example, optimizing the model parameters, uh, creating better or better suited initial conditions, or going for a partial or even full model replacement, just deriving the things from, from uh, data. There are examples in computational fluid dynamics. I took here an example from uh, photodynamics, so there are a lot of examples where we really see that classical simulation tasks are uh, sped up by uh, AI. But not only in the modeling and simulation field, also in classical operational uh, HPC tasks, uh, here summarized with the term predictive maintenance, so uh, some kind of log data analysis, failure pred prediction, can we predict that something will, will, will happen also uh, anomaly detection, so then we, can we see from what happens in an HPC center that, that something not normal happens and we should uh, take care of that. So there are a couple of, also on the operational side, things, also energy optimization, where we can see today that artificial intelligence, ideas, techniques from artificial intelligence empower HPC, and that's the topic of session two. In session three, then, we went for an application field, 
and we chose um, the energy transition. So energy with a focus on ren renewables. That's, of course, uh, things like wind energy, but also uh, hydropower. And for all of these applications, if we want to if, if you want to simulate, if you want to improve the efficiency and so on, there's a lot of uh, HPC uh, necessities, a lot of requirements for HPC uh, behind that. And last but not least, uh, it is our session four on mixed arithmetic, starting from the hypothesis that right-sizing precision is one of the best options we have for reducing energy and, of course, for increasing uh, speed for uh, Calculations And actually, we have seen that over the last years that things like mixed precision and now also mixed arithmetics become more and more important. So there are different developments. There was this new num at the beginning. Now we have posits, and posits are a bit a counterpart of uh, floats. Uh, posits now uh, get some response from, from industry. There are quite a couple of companies who have uh, picked up this um, idea. And... Uh, so there are also a couple of recent algorithmic developments that, that increase the applicability. Yeah, and this ends this short overview of what we have designed for our track uh, applications and algorithms. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this year's digital ISC and see you all back next year when this track will be back on stage again. Thank you.